four continuums that I'm gonna outline. And I'm just gonna give you the control part right now, right? So one is we start talking in a lot of evaluation. Our thinking and our language, I want you to think about where is your attention? If you're going to start transforming any of this, you start doing an attention practice. How much of my thinking, whether I say it or not, and my language, the things I'm actually saying, how much of that, thinking and language, which I would say have a bi-directional impact on one another, okay? They inform one another. How much of my thinking and language is um, evaluation, interpretation, thinking, strategy, demand? Most of us are communicating most of the time through this frame. I'll tell you what I think about you. I'll tell you what it meant to me. I'll tell you all of the story and drama that I have going along with it. I'll tell you what I think should happen and how it should be different. And I'll tell you that you, should, you either are going to do this and make me happy or you're not going to do it and make me unhappy and then there's going to be consequences. This is how most of us communicate with one another in what we think is a relational way most of the time. This is really, really advanced and competent control talk. Okay? This language is designed to get power over a situation. It's not relational language. <coughs> so when you know that, you can start being more choiceful about when you're using it. It's not language that builds intimacy, depth, relationship, connection, understanding. It doesn't tend to lead to growth or healing. It gets people very much into this idea of whether I'm a good person or a bad person, whether I'm doing things right or I'm doing things wrong, whether it's inappropriate, inappropriate. It increases a lot of dualism and a lot of disconnection in relationships. Okay, questions on any of that? Or comments? Well, it's really hard to buck because that's the whole system mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, it's extremely hard to buck. So don't try to buck it <coughs> because bucking it is another form of hierarchy, domination, and control. What you do with this when you find it is you give it a big hug. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So when this comes up inside of you, you go, oh, my darling little jackal. <laughs> there you are again. <laughs> You want to develop an attitude of working with this. So I want to introduce this concept of working with because it is absolutely key to switching into a relational frame. Um, everything that I just went through is internalized, it's in you, it's around you, it's the culture that we're swimming in. And the true essence of nonviolence or collaboration is working with it in a relational way that integrates it, but doesn't let it lead the way anymore. We're not getting rid of it. We're not judging it. We're not making it and not this. We're not othering it. We're really embracing it and using it as a capacity and a skill that we've developed, but it's not the only one. We need a broader range. Is that making sense? So you greet all of this when you see it with a lot of love. That's one of the practices. As it comes up, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. It doesn't run my life anymore. But I'm also not in resistance to it. Instead, I, I begin witnessing it, getting present to it, paying attention to it, getting choiceful about it. Does that help? No matter what the other person says. No matter what the other person says, yes, but I'll come back to how complicated that can get. And I'm sorry, I missed the other I thing. I just said not when you're in the situation. Oh, no. It's already happening. No. When you're, when you're swept up in this and you're surfing that wave, it's very difficult to get off it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where a lot of self-acceptance and self-compassion comes in. Because this is a strong part. All of the red that I've just outlined is a strong part of all of us. And if we're in any relationship where we're feeling some insecurity or some fear, this is the realm of all of your defenses that are going to kick in. 
because they really want to keep you safe. They want to help the world be predictable. They want you to have security. And so you bring in all of your defenses. And then what happens relationally is all of my defenses will relate with all of your defenses and we wonder why we're so lonely in the relationship. Because we don't know another way of being. And then we get very concerned about being safe all the time. And if my primary goal in a relationship is being safe, it's, it's not going to build intimacy and growth. Okay? We need more than safe. Safe is important, but we've got to get beyond safe. Yeah. In my experience growing up, that system allows things to get done. It's very efficient. It's very efficient. It's very, very efficient, and which is why I'm saying don't make this bad. Okay? Actually, uh, if, you want the, if you want things to get done in the world, you absolutely need a hierarchy. And so um, the difference is if you have a hierarchy operating with a group of people who have a lot of trust, connection, understanding, goodwill, shared vision and purpose, and somebody in that group takes the lead and says, we're going to go this way, and everybody has deep trust, and they're like, yep, we're behind you, it's very, very efficient. So collaboration is not about everybody always agreeing on every single thing and every voice being included in every decision, which is one of the reasons why I think there's a lot of resistance to going there, because nothing would ever get done. But when we're looking at interdependence, it includes hierarchy. If you're a Viking fan, yes. and you're, you read about how things are going with the coaches and the players, that's kind of what you're just talking about, is yeah. that everybody's working together for this common. Yes, yeah. yes. That's uh, the light side of hierarchy. You know, and I, I want to emphasize this point. This is not inherently good or bad. We want this to be used for the purposes for which it really meets people's needs well. We don't want to vilify any of this. But if it's the only way we know how to function, we're at a severe disadvantage. And for many of us, it's the only way we know how to function until we learn the counterbalance. And if you can learn the counterbalance, and, it, and this can happen within the context of loving relationship, it's a completely different experience. Completely different. Thank you for bringing that point up. Good? Okay. What I want to do now is switch gears and talk a little bit about the connect world, yeah?